Hey, happy, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Bird. Wow, pie. Listen, it's week 33, and I wanted to start this episode off. <coughs> sorry, my throat. I wanted, I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm, I got a frog on my throat. Yeah. A frog on the lung. Come on, Kermit. Uh, <laughs> come on, Kermit. This episode is dedicated to all of our 33 year old campers. Oh. We should have started doing that like every single week because now I'm going to do it every week, and everyone that's younger than 33 is going to be like, God damn it. <laughs> we missed the boat and we're never going back. Well, listen, listen, you'll get something else. There'll be a segment about you and you'll feel your oats and you'll feel your little dimes a dozen. That it makes sense. Or when you turn 33, just listen to this episode again. Just put mark it on your calendars and you'll be sad. Yeah, don't go to the Cheesecake Factory for your fresh um, birthday cheesecake. <laughs> listen to Camp Shady Virgin instead. Okay, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm feeling a little better than last week. I'm actually feeling a lot better. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better for you sure. Still have a little bit of um, frog in the throat, but rubber, rubber. energy's higher. Mm. Jonathan and I have been on our fitness kick, you guys. We've been pelotoning every day. We've been stepping out on the city. We've been claiming this these streets as our own. Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling good. What did we do this week, Jonathan? Your friends came to visit us, and we went to Roosevelt Allen. Is it Roosevelt or Roosevelt? It's wait, it's Theodore Roosevelt. Well, I think it's all in depending how sassy you're feeling. Well, I'm feeling Roosevelt because yeah. it's just the prettiest flower in all the land. So I'm going to say Roosevelt. We went to Roosevelt Island, which I had heard of, but I had never been to before. We took one of those, um, what is it? It's like a, a gondola. What it's a is? sky tram. A, scra- a sky tram. I love that. It's definitely like, okay, if you were to think of like when you're going skiing, which, you know, I've only done once in my life. If you go like a nice bougie kind of mountain, they have those like covered trams. Yeah. And this is one of those. So Roosevelt Island in the 1900s was used as a place to place all of the people in New York City that had smallpox on one party island. They're like, ew, 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 you're sick, sick, sick. Get out of Manhattan. <laughs> We're putting you on an island. I don't know anything else about it. Like, I know other things happened there, but I know it was like the quarantine area. Yeah, it was giving quarantine, and I was like, well, honestly, let's celebrate um, like kind of like the end of COVID, which I don't know. Is it over? Um, I don't think so. When do we know know when a pandemic is over? I think when the numbers reach like a low, a low number, but I don't, uh, you know, all the things I learned at doctor school, that was one of the things that I missed class for. Yeah. When Jonathan was in school to be a pharmacist, he missed that course. Um, yeah, I think we're coming out of it, but it just felt fitting. We're like, Hey, we're celebrating spring. Everyone's feeling fresh, young and free. My friends, Carly and Josh were visiting. So we brought them over there. It's 275 guys. So honestly, if you're out of Camp Shady Birch and you're ever visiting New York, like all joking aside, this was a really fierce, fun little day trip. It thing. was fun. It was windy. It was breezy. And the tram is like the side of like a three car garage. Yeah, I think you could probably fit like 50 to 75 people on it. Yeah, and, and one one smart car. And yet like you bring it, and if you're scared of heights, absolutely do never never do this in your no. entire life. But it felt safe. It goes over like the streets of New York City and you're like, hey, Sex and City, Carrie Bradshaw, here I am, aerial shot. Yeah. And then it brings you to this gorgeous island and there's a lot of apartments on there, which I'm like, that seems really not like, I don't know, like easy to get to places, but like yeah. go off queen. Um, also, there's a Cornell University. We don't care about that, but like good for them. Smarty pants. Cornell. <laughs> Cornell, <laughs> Cornell. Cornell University. <laughs> but we went to get a little cocktail. They, yeah, there was like a beautiful like hotel there and they had this gorgeous bar there. So we brought them there. We had a little drinks, looked at the cherry blossoms, looked at the ruins of the hospital that housed all of these Six smallpox people. Yeah, it was looking small. I was like, how many people were here? Yeah, it definitely was giving small for sure. Smallpox. Smallpox, small hospital. Honestly, <laughs> smallpox is kind of fierce in that way. It's only for like the petite. If you're petite, you get smallpox. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, No, it was really fun. So they were here this week. And then the next day we went to dinner at a really chic place. So if you know anything about me, I love a chic eatery, okay? I want ambiance. I want gorgeous gorgeous hors d'oeuvres. I want to feel wined and dined. And if I have to wine and dine myself, God damn it, I'll do it. So we took them to <laughs> Restoration Hardware. Have, do you guys have Restoration Hardware where you live? It's a, It was popular where I was from. It was not popular in my area. I had been to one once, but it was not as bougie. No. As, what I remember it was not being bougie. And what 
we went to was very bougie. There was a restoration hardware back in my heyday at the Providence Place Mall. And in high school, me and my friends would go there and we would take photos at like the dining room table sets and on the couches and pretend that it was our living room. Mm. And we would post like pictures of us at like a long table in front of like a gorgeous window in the Providence Place Mall. And we'd be like meetings. And it's like, shut <laughs> up. We were not in a meeting. But I, I was very privy yeah. to our age. But I saw a girl on Instagram, Jess Val. She went there for brunch a couple weeks ago. And I was like, okay, that's the best place to find a restaurant. See where your friends are going. Click the location. And then you make a reservation. And you say, oh my God, we just happen to have had the same taste. No, no, no. Steal people's ideas. I love that. But it was great. So it's like, basically, it's this gorgeous building. I think it's in like the West Village. And it's a furniture store on the first five floors. Yeah. And they're all kind of broken up into like... Outer, outerwear. They had like a teen room, a teen floor. Well, it was like the kids' floor. It was like kids' living rooms, kids, kids' bedrooms. It was like okay, like is it, is this kid a billionaire? Like right. God, whose kid? Yeah, whose kids shops there? But Northwest. like the couches were like seven thousand dollars. So obviously we had to scan every barcode, see how much it costs, and then sit on it and fill our oats. Pocket change. Yeah, we definitely couldn't afford to be there. But listen, if you have a lung and a brain, you you can walk anywhere. Don't let anybody tell you don't belong anywhere. Just believe that you can, and you will. So we, uh, we sh- and if anybody questions it, just like run your hand across like the wood and give it a good knock and be like, oh yes, I am considering purchasing this. You can't tell how rich somebody is based on the garb they are choosing to wear. This is true. This is true. That's judgment. Listen, Megan Trainer went on RuPaul's Drag Race in a onesie, and I'm pretty sure that girl's got money. But it was giving Walmart. Love you, Meg. Um, so we we went up and down the little stairs. My friend Carly, she's pregnant, so that's why we went downstairs to the child section. And she was like, yeah, this is gorgeous, but like. What was it? There was like a fur, a white fur line changing table. If that baby has a blowout, okay, that thing's going to be lime green and brown. And I'm not seeing corn, okay? <laughs> that thing better be washable. Well, it wasn't practical. That's the thing about rich kids. They don't poop. Yeah, rich kids in my... Okay, when you were in medical school, you learned yes. that rich kids poop out rubies and pearls <laughs> rubies <laughs> yeah that's how they keep the wealth going they just poop out rubies yeah they don't eat guys so rich if you know a rich kid they don't even have to wipe because when they do wipe it's just gold plated yeah. <laughs> and when you see your grandma wearing her ruby brooch that that came out of a, that came out of an expensive butthole yeah that was baby maximilian whatever happened to the name maximilian no i like it let's bring it back there's okay so if your name is max it's derivative of the greek word Maxwell, but there's also Maximilian. Wasn't there a movie? Uh, Max Keebler's Big Move. No, I wasn't thinking that one. That one's really good. This was on ABC Family era the 90s, and it was like Maximilian, and he was rich. He was a rich kid. Richie Rich? Oh, you know what? <laughs> Richie Rich's name, in I fact, see. You were was thinking, Max. You were thinking Rich. <laughs> you were thinking Max, a millionaire, and it was Richie Rich because he was he was rich. That's where your brain was at. I see. I was picking up what you're putting down. I see where your headspace was at. Richie Rich was a great movie. Yeah, he had a McDonald's in that house. Was that on Disney? Um, no, but it was definitely like. Tickling with the thought of being a Disney movie. So how do we watch it? Sure. VHS, Blockbuster, Hollywood Video. Campers, please, if you have some will and some willpower, get on the Google. You know, get on my Snapchat AI and ask them where to watch Richie Rich. Because I remember watching that movie and being like, this kid is rich. I want that. Macaulay Culkin, yeah. Was it Macaulay Culkin? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, what can he do? I love that guy. Yeah, it's a great guy. Great movie. Anyway. We went up to the top. We went up to the top floor at the end of all this is to say, at the top of the restoration hardware is a gorgeous eatery that they conveniently call RH. Yeah. (laughs) I I was like, okay, RH. I was shocked. And the food (laughs) was banging. Turns out I like artichokes. Well, you like a fried artichoke. Were they fried? That was not. It was giving battered. It was giving air fried. It was no, I thought. Crunch. I thought it was like baked. It was crispy, but it wasn't like deep fried. You're right. It wasn't deep fried. Well, maybe it was air fried. Oh. It was crunchy, yeah. and it came with an aioli. Mm. You can dip anything in an aioli, and I'm gonna I love it. Fucking love an aioli. And yeah. then we also got the cheese board with. Oh my god, you guys! Like, close your eyes for a minute, everybody. What do you think about? So I read this. It was. It was a sourdough loaf. With a soft cheese and strawberry jam. 
I love a strawberry jam. We added the prosciutto. I was living, okay? I just love an I love a nice hors d'oeuvre. And the entire Restoration Hardware Eatery, RH, it's all like roof to ceiling, like glass. Yeah. And you're like, it's giving like rooftop, but like yeah, closed. 360. And I had a burger because I was just, I wanted a simple burger. Yeah. And it was a great burger. <laughs> What say burger one more time. I like to say, listen, if I'm spending $25 on a burger, it's not pronounced burger anymore. It's pronounced burger. Yeah, you're getting all the all the consonants in that uh, word. What did you get? What did I get? Oh, I got the salmon. It was good. It was good. I was limited. That was kind of the only thing I could get. Yeah. But you, I enjoyed you, it. I would have ordered it regardless. You know, it's an expensive place, you guys, when every all the sides are offered as a la carte. A la carte. Also, they called the mashed potatoes a potato puree. Potato puree. Get the stick out of your asshole and just call it mashed potatoes, okay? You're charging $13, $13 for mm, it. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was $18. Yeah. And they didn't have salt in it, babe, okay? It wasn't even seasoned right. Um, But you liked it. I did. I enjoyed it. Guys, all this to say is we're giving you some New York tips. You're going to go to Roosevelt Island, take the Sky Tram, visit the smallpox um, little hospital there that's yeah. in ruins. A geese lives there. His name is Walter. And then you can go to the little bar, get a drink. And then for dinner, you're going to head to the West Village. You're going to go to the RH. Before you do that, you're going to sit on a $7,000 couch and tell everybody in the room, you deserve to be there because you do. Um, Amen. Yeah. man. Retweet. It was a fun little boppity bop bop weekend. I yeah. loved it. I'm glad that Carly and Josh came. I love when people visit. We're getting really good now at when people visit because when people first started to visit us, I always felt this immense pressure to be like, host, host, host. Yeah. And like, I'm different than everybody else. I feel in the way that like, I need an itinerary and I don't ever want to sit on a couch. hundred percent. When we first started dating, I would be like, oh wow, this boy does not like to sit. He, he's on the go, 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 which I think is fun. It's, it is fun. But you always have like, you're like, okay, I have breakfast with this person and then I'm going to go do this errand and then I'm going to do lunch with this person. I think it's a fun way to live. Like your, your days have little chapters in them. I just think some people do like to visit their friends and they just enjoy sitting on a couch and watching Trisha Paytas videos. Which we did do. And I forget that that's okay as an activity. Because I'm always like panicking, like everyone's bored, everyone's having not, not a good time. So that's why I went, especially when they visit New York. Oh my God, my stomach, that was crazy. Oh my God, I thought somebody honked a horn outside. <laughs> I dead ass thought that was a car. It was all that conversation about the pureed <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> oh, we'll have to have that for dinner. So listen, if you ever visit us in New York, you guys, we got you. Just let us know ahead of time. Are you down to sit? Or do you want to be run to the bone with activities? Because we are walking. Because we can do either thing. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to morning announcements. I'm feeling really creepy right now. No, that was so funny. I think we have to change the intro to that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, God. Okay, in all seriousness, I need your attention. Oh my attention? God. Attention? This needs to be serious, you guys. Everyone stop laughing. Stop laughing now. Attention campers. Nadine has notified us that everyone's been asking for pictures of us. They've been, oh, Nadine, Nadine, look over here. Let's take pictures. Pictures of, with Nadine. Nadine, can we get a picture? Pictures without even asking her pictures from behind the, the bush, hiding in the bush, just taking pictures of Nadine. Guys, Nadine says no to flash photography. You can, however, take a normal photo with her. If it's a if it's a live photo, she's going to snatch your phone and throw it into the river. It's going to be in the bin, okay? So no flash photography. She's light sensitive. She's a sensitive soul. She and, is. And, um, and it can affect her one single working leg. So just keep that in mind. And you guys, take a picture. we brought up Nadine as a trusting thing with you guys that you wouldn't, you would not approach her because she does not like the campers at Camp Shady Birch. She's just a good employee. So please respect her boundaries and no approaching Nadine, okay? We and you just know that she doesn't like you. But we do. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I need to, I keep forgetting I'm wearing shorts. I need to make sure my kooka roll is not out. You need to give me like a little signal because sometimes I, I'm watching footage back from last summer and I was like, I know. I can almost see Mary Kay and Ashley. Well, sometimes right. you can see up my shorts a little bit, but I don't mind showing a little skin. <laughs> if the price is right. It's the Brazilian in me. I'm not Brazilian. Moving forward, you guys, this is morning announcements. This is the news that you probably missed that we feel like you need to tell all of your coworkers, your kids, your aunts and uncles, and that neighbor that you keyed their car last week. We didn't tell her, but we know you keyed it. We, we have footage of it too, bitch. It's on the ring. What's, 
<laughs> do you want to? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm being silly. Jonathan, do you want to start? What do you have for news, babes? All right. So this article is coming from the New York Post, and it's by Asia Grace, and it's titled Gen Z is bringing goats to prom thanks to Michael Jordan. Now, when I read a title like that, I'm interested, to yeah. say the very least. All right, so there are high school seniors and the class of 2023 prom attendees from around the country are jumping onto this trend. I hate that it's becoming a trend or that we're like calling it a trend, but the story actually starts with Michael Jordan. So, you know, everybody's like, Michael Jordan is the GOAT, the greatest of all time, you know, actually, for those who don't know. Chelsea Handler is the GOAT. Moving forward. Yeah, I think there, there's goats aplenty just roaming around, chewing on the, the rhubarb. <laughs> You're the goat of Camp Shady Birch. Oh, thank you. Don't let Nadine hear that at all because she will have our heads. Michael Jordan, his number on the Chicago Bulls, 23. Everybody knows 23 is Michael Jordan's number. The year is 2023. So this is the class of 2023. And there was an 18-year-old student from West Palm Beach, Florida. His name was Jermarcus. And he told the New York Post, he's kind of where this rooted from what they were gathering. Um, he said, I brought a goat to prom because I'm known in my city for being the greatest when it comes to fashion and photography. And I wanted to show everyone that I really am the greatest of all time. So he spent a hundred dollars and rented a goat for about an hour. He took photos. He didn't actually bring it to prom, but he rented the goat for a for hundred dollars for an hour, took the photos with it. And, um, in the post, it called the goat his horned arm candy. And honestly, same. Like, I love that for him. Uh, and at first, I was like, okay, let's like let's let kids be kids. This is stupid. It's silly. It was getting some backlash. He was getting backlash in particular. Um, but then, I don't know. I'm a little torn because I think about, you know, when when animals are being exploited or used in situations like this, it's like the animals are never winning. You know what I mean? Like, the people who are taking the $100 for the goat, like, they're just doing this willy-nilly. And he wasn't the only one to do it, obviously. It became a trend. People started doing it all over TikTok. There was one girl who had like 2.5 million likes on a video of her posing with a goat. And she actually brought that one to prom. So then people were like not just taking photos. They're like bringing a goat to a prom where there's like loud music and people probably drunk. I don't know. I haven't been to prom in two years. I'm just so young and chipper. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that was my, my article. And, um, how do you, how do you feel about bringing goats to prom? I think it's funny. I thought, I thought like initially the goat was at prom. I don't agree with bringing the animal to the prom. Right. I think paying a hundred dollars to take a funny Instagram photo and saying, I am the goat of, of my graduating class. Hysterical, creative, never been done before. Beautiful idea deserves all of the credit. I am always in it for your own self publicity. I just think don't bring it to prom, but I think it's a hysterical idea. Who cares? And the goat, okay. I, I, as a previous goat owner, as you guys know, yes. I am, I am, I can speak on this. I yeah, really can. Please. Goats don't care. They're literally like just down for it, right? I saw the pictures of him. He was in a grassy knoll, I would say. There was grass aplenty. The grass yeah. probably, the goat was probably just chewing some grass. He took some photos for $100. The farmer made a bag. The goat's just chilling. You know what I mean? Goating. I just don't think we should bring it into like the actual like day ends. But Agreed. And I think also there was another girl who she looked stunning. She took photos with the goat on train tracks in between two train tracks. So I'm like dangerous. She had like one of those um, like colored smoke bombs behind her and her prom date was standing on her dress. Like she had her train like float out on the train tracks, <laughs> the train on the train and he was standing on it and the goat was standing on like the train tracks. Yeah. So that's where I was like drawing the line. Never, never. I, I, okay. I, first of all, train track photography, let's, that could take a hike on its mm -hmm. own. Okay. That is like the most been there, done that basic ass. How do you have like this great idea of bringing a goat into it and then like taint it with a smoke bomb and a train track? Okay. We've seen it. We've done it. We know it's available. Um, I think the trend really starts to die when everyone starts doing it. It becomes like less exciting. I think, um, what was his name? Jamarcus? Mm -hmm. Jamarcus really popped off with that idea and he deserves all the credit. Um, I'm not against it. As long as the goat's okay and no one's hurting the goat, get it off the train track for sure. Yeah. It's just, let kids be goddamn kids. Let them be silly. Let them have fun. I was always like that. And I feel like I'm still in that mindset of being a kid. So I feel like I, I love the creativity and the fun of it. I do. I think it's exciting. The greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. You gotta, 
<laughs> you got a story for us? Yes, I do, everybody. So this is for my local girls, gays and theys. This is a story coming right out of Providence, Rhode Island. <gasps> I've been there. I'm from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Actually, Dartmouth, but I say New Bedford. I live there longer. Anyways, I went to school in Providence, Rhode Island. I went to Rhode Island College. Go Anchorman. That is the worst, guys. That was what my college, that was what the teams were called. The Anchorman? Yeah, and it wasn't like a news anchor. It was like a, a like a, a ship hand. Like a the, guy. The guy who throws over the, the emergency brake. I'm assuming. I didn't play sports, but that's what they were. Anyways, this story was written by Anita Bafani. And I think this comes from like WPRI, a local news station in Rhode Island. And it's titled Giant Stuffies to Take Over Four Major Airports. Okay. Giant so, what? Stuffies. A giant size replica of a Rhode Island seafood staple will soon be on display at four major airports across the country. Stuffies, which are quahog stuffed with breakfast crumbs and herbs will be installed at airports in Los Angeles, Detroit, Atlanta, and Baltimore as a part of a tourism campaign. Rhode Island Commerce spokeswoman Lindsay Russell told 12 News that the dimensions of the stuffies have not been finalized, but they'll be a large scale and they'll be installed sometime in June. So Rhode Island is really known for their calamari. Have you ever been in a restaurant and seen Point Judith Calamari. Yes, that's from the small state in the <laughs> Union, Rhode Island. But one of their most iconic, like, regional foods are stuffed quahogs, which are called stuffies if you're a local. Right. Um, and they were like, you know what? Like, we could do calamari, but it's so been there, done that. Like, it's not exciting. Let's do something that people don't know. So essentially, it's going to be like, and there'll be a photo if you're watching on YouTube yeah. from the news article. It's like this giant, like, almost like boulder-sized stuffed quahog will be in these airports because people are going to see it and they're going to be like, wait, what, what is, is this? That? And then they'll see a little write-up about why to visit Rhode Island. And I think the idea is phenomenal. I think it's exciting. I have a few things to say. Yes. One, it's, I love it. It's a great idea. Two, I am not from the area, so you know what a quahog is. When I think quahog, I just think family guy because they're from Rhode Island and yeah. I had no clue that a quahog was an actual thing. So what is it? Isn't it like a giant oyster? A quahog is like a giant mollusk of some sort. Mollusk. More similar to a clam, not really a scallop. But um, it's like when you would cut it up like really nice and you almost be like, think about like a stovetop stuffing mix, but mm, with little mm -hmm. bits of like a cooked clam in it. Yeah. And they just, they just make a stuffing and all they do is, is they simply like roast it. I don't know if they cook it in the shell or they just put it on there as a presentation after, but it's served as in the actual shell itself. So it's kind of exciting. A little Tabasco, a little butter tab, <laughs> a little lemon for your nerve. It's exciting. If you're from the area, it seems like a no brainer, but like as someone from Philly- I I had no, never even heard of a quahog. And maybe it's just, maybe I'm just an idiot. No, that's why they chose it because people don't know what it is. And it's so good. The first time you took me to have, like, because usually they have linguisa in them. They usually have meat in them. But you took me to a place that had, like, just the quahog meat in it. And it was so good. And I, I, I want to go back. I know. It was end zones. Guys. Are in the area, go to end zones. End zone, north end. They just remodeled. It looks like absolute shit. It was so much more cooler <laughs> oh, before. No. no, I'll say it. I'll say it. This goes back to the episode where they went, they did the fucking estate of like the 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 like the metal bar stools and the wood stop it they switched it to that because <sighs> that's what men do men ruin restaurants and it was a cute local eatery a little watering hole for your nerve and then they closed it for two weeks and they reopened it and i'm sure the food's amazing and we're still going to attend but i'm allowed to have an opinion on the interior you are end zone I'm giving you free press. The food's amazing. But I will say, you dropped the ball on the new aesthetic. But they're one of the only places in the area that serve quahogs that, that don't, don't have, have the linguisa in it. And it's so good. I know. So if you're not like Jonathan and you're like me, it's honestly fantastic with the linguisa in it as well. A little spicy pork. Um, but yeah, you can't have that. But there's plenty of places that don't do it in Rhode Island. It's a Rhode Island thing, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm thinking it's exciting. Um, so, and those airports are pretty major. Those are big airports. I'm going to give you, though, John, a little activity for you guys. And you guys can play along as well. Okay. Here are three states that if they were to do a similar campaign and put a large food item in a variety of airports, what food item comes to mind initially? I'm nervous. Let's start with your home state, Pennsylvania. Cheese steak. Wow, like a big cheesesteak? Well, it's either cheesesteak or I think it doesn't have to be food. Can it be beverage? Um, Hey, it's your game. It's your rules. I would say birch beer. Have you had a birch beer? 
Yeah, it's not exciting. I, kind of gross. I think they were exciting because I moved away when I was younger. So anytime I could get my hands on a Pennsylvania Dutch birch beer, I was like gassed. I was like, I'm from here. I'm from here. They make this where I'm from. But like as I'm older, I do not drink them at all. But I love a Pennsylvania Dutch birch beer. I thought you were going to say the pretzel. <gasps> Because a pretzel would be exciting to see. Okay, wait. Oh, now but I'm the changing thing, my mind. But the pretzel. thing is, though, pretzels, as much as they're such a Philly thing, they really are everywhere. Yeah. So maybe the che- I think the cheesesteak was smart. Uh, yeah, I don't think other people would think pretzels as much of, like, the people who live there. Does that make sense? Yes. Because you know my obsession with pretzels. I love a pretzel. I eat them all day. I, I think your entire friend group is obsessed with pretzels. Yeah. Y'all well, don't stop eating pretzels. <laughs> we went to Disney World and the one Christmas ornament we bought was the Mickey pretzel. Yeah, but that was really cute. It's so cute. And the salt is fucking glitter. It's, it's glitter salt. It's glitter salt. That was, that, hey, that was $20 well spent and I will not apologize for mm. it. Okay, next state, Idaho. Potato. I know. It kind of just, you know what? With Rhode Island, they were like, let's think not on the nose here, but Idaho, it's got to be the potato. And I feel bad for any of our, I don't feel bad for our Idaho listeners, but I'm saying when I think Idaho, I think the entire state is just like a field of potatoes. So maybe Idaho should really step up their bussy and give us an option that isn't potatoes so we know something else. Yeah, but the potatoes they're giving us, like the Orida potato. First off, Orida is Oregon and Idaho. Combined. That's like right on the state line. Or Ida. Yeah. Sorry, mic drop moment. My eyes are welling up because that was so emotional for me to listen to. Like, I'm literally, zoom in, you guys. I'm literally in tears because I cannot believe my favorite frozen potato brand had a name that was in, engrossed in its location and I was unaware. Yeah. Well, oh I God, always thought was it was. <laughs> you really are crying. Okay, just like, what a, I love these aha moments as we get older because <laughs> we learn less and less as we become adults. And I'm learning every day. And I, I think it's amazing. I love Oprah. But I always thought it was like, <laughs> well, all right. Uh. That, that seems more plausible. All right. Uh. Put them in the air fryer. Yeah, but it's like Florabama Shore. It's like, it's, it's, it's the a region. It's the line. It's a region, if you will. Yeah, yeah. And the South Coast, where I'm from, is kind of, that's why I feel a little bit more kinship to Rhode Island because it's a little, we're in a hook. We're in a hook and gather, a hook and ladder. We're hookers. Okay, a next state, Texas. Roadhouse. Uh, uh, toast. Texas. Texas toast. toast. That is so bitches. clever, babe. Thank you. That is so. Jonathan is obsessed with just like the, the the culture, the lore that surrounds Texas toast. I love Texas toast. And we went to where were we? were in Texas. We were in Dallas. Last summer, it was 105 degrees. I could feel my plastic surgery melting right off my face. My tits were falling off. It was bad. Sweat's just dripping down my it, back. There was no breeze. And at nighttime, it did not let up you guys so we went to it was like a um a a painting with a twist it was like one of those art places where you drink and you do crafts and the craft we chose to do well the craft you wanted to do was make a like a toolbox out of wood. And You've I was like, already dragged gonna... me for this before. Don't do this. Sorry. Again. I was just confused as to how the hell we were going to get it home. But we ended up doing one of the, what do you call it? It's like, um, the metal plate jewelry that you press yes. with a stamp and you yeah. like, you can stamp, write metal, metal stamping, metal stamping. And it, I put on mine, obviously Gorgina mm-hmm. and you put on yours. What? Texas toast. It was so cute, babe. You should right. have merch that says Texas toast. You should start making TikToks about like ranking Texas toast because if anyone, th- you don't think about it like initially, like, oh, I love Texas toast. But then when someone brings it up, you're like, oh, fuck. I love Texas toast. Yeah. I don't know if there's people who don't like that. Maybe somebody who's gluten free and has SIBO. Oh, uh, yeah. It's but like their worst nightmare. Imagine being in an airport and seeing a giant Texas toast. I would stop, pop a hip, hand on the hip, mm-hmm. knee popped, saying, Peace sign. Take my photo. Yeah, I would already squat their shit out of it. That's cute. We need to find some more history about Texas toast. It must be from Texas. Great options, babe. Thank you. Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back to Gossip Dog. Gossip Dog. Yeah. (laughs) First of all, I just want to say you guys really stepped it up this week. The submissions are out of control. It became so hard to choose which story to share. We are backlogged with some great stories. So everybody buckle in for the next few weeks because we are safe. Mm. (laughs) We are safe and sound. You know what it was? I think we hadn't done a lot of gossip talk in a while. It took the backseat because we started doing a bunch of other stuff. And I think everyone came together and was like, we need to submit some juicy gossip. And y'all did. We got 
tons of tons. emails. And like I said, it was a hard choice this week. So if you have submitted in the last couple of weeks, don't think you're out for the count. It's we, you are you are starred in a folder. We yeah. will get there eventually. The show's not going anywhere. Okay. So I'm just gonna get right into it, you guys. Hey, ha- hey, camp counselors. Do I have a juicy story for y'all? Yes, this camper is from Alabama. Far, far away from Camp Shady Verge. I was told a silly little story from my sister-in-law about her friends. We will call her Kelly and her husband we will call Jeff. Kelly and Jeff had their first baby in 2016 at 19 years old, very young, and became engaged and got married in 2019. Since then, they've had two more babies and a lot of marital issues. Not sure the extent, but from what I've gathered, Jeff may have had a little bit of a hard drug and anger problem. Kelly and Jeff decided to separate and began the divorce process in January, and Kelly decided to get her engagement ring turned into two earrings and a diamond pendant necklace. Side note, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, Because you don't want to get rid of the diamond, but like that's a great way to repurpose the diamond. Yeah, for sure. Okay. She took her ring to a jeweler, she says, is a family friend and had her rings appraised by him years prior. When she took the ring in this time, he informed her that the diamonds were not real, which means at some point they had been switched. (sighs) Kelly remembers months and months ago when her mother-in-law offered to get her rings cleaned. And Kelly, thinking her mother-in-law was just being kind, agreed. Kelly was furious and confronted Jeff about the issue. Jeff admitted months ago, before the separation, his mother had taken the rings and replaced the diamonds with fake diamonds since this ring was a family heirloom and they did not think she was entitled to have it. This enraged Kelly as she had done this before they were even separated and it made no sense. Instead of kicking this man to the street for good, at some point Kelly took Jeff back recently and they've been together ever since. I have no idea of the status of her rings, but let's just say good vibes, prayers, and a good playlist of fuck men songs to her. Sign, The Fake Diamonds in Cabin 14. (laughs) Quite the scandal, you understand. Listen, the diamonds were switched before the separation had ever been discussed. So, So, what if the whole thing, what if the mom really never did that and they were just fake? What no, if because home- she you missed that. She said she took them to the family jeweler that had appraised them initially. She knew they're real. And the the jeweler had appraised them. And that's when he brought them back. He was like, these aren't real now. Oh, like, he's like, these are not the same. Yes, yes. And he and Jeff came clean and was like, hey, mama took them. And oh. mama said, you're, you're, not my, you're not a good woman for the heirloom. Oh, my God. I, I have never heard of anyone switching diamonds. No, is this, what kind of movie is this? Can you imagine the mother-in-law being like, baby, we need to all clean them. Don't worry. Just hand them to me. I'll take care of it. And then her being like, switch those goddamn diamonds. You know, she was like carrying them in like a little silk satchel or she put them in a little hanky. Well, listen. She had in her pocket and she slid it and she's like, I'm taking this brooch and I'm, I'm switching these diamonds. I'm telling you, Easter must have have sucked this year um congratulations to kelly and jeff i hope you guys are happy it seems like things are on the rocks <laughs> yeah. it's none of my business i will sip my tea and never forget your swap diamonds grab your bug juice and bear spray campers it's time to pack it up and take a hike welcome back to take a hike this is the part of the show where we bitch a little bit more than we do bitch in the rest of the episode and we tell something to take a hike get the hell out of here i hate you so much i'm gonna cut your keys off that didn't make sense cut your keys off i I love that i sometimes i just start screaming and the words are not all there but Mm -hmm. the energy is there and the passion is complete amen Jonathan, what do you want to take a hike this week? What do you want to kick in the balls? So, the, before you say anything, I'm not dragging you. This is a situation that has happened through my entire life. And I just wanted to talk about it because it brings me great stress and anxiety. And I wanted to, to tell it to take a hike. It seems like you're going to say something about me. And it feels very pointed already. Continue. When people put their feet on the dashboard. Get over yourself. No, listen. Here, <laughs> Stop. Here's the thing. It's not a sanitation thing. As much as like, I don't need to be staring at anybody's tippies. Love your tippies. Love those little tootsies. I'll, I'll suck on them later. That was gross. Edit that out. But I hate, there was a movie. Okay. Quentin Tarantino movie. It was called Death Proof. It came out in 2007. Mm-hmm. And there was one scene that stuck with me like no other scene in a movie has. And basically, these girls are in a car, and this guy is driving a car, and they can't they can't really see him. And he hits them head on, 
but it's shot in slow-mo when they hit the car and this girl has her foot up on the dashboard and her other leg out the window. And I'm not going to get into details. Yeah, yeah, I know. I and know. you know Quentin Tarantino and he likes it violent, but it is a, it's detached. It's flying out the window. The airbags deploy. You know, you have one leg behind the other. You just said no details and you proceeded to give us well, all the details. Because it's literally, I can still see it in my head. And he like does that thing where he rewinds and he plays it from each girl's perspective. So he'll show it. Okay, anyway, not to trigger anybody, but that is why I hate when people put their feet up on the dashboard. I can't even drive comfortably. Like, I'm trying to pay attention to the road, but out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, I really don't like the fact that this person's, like, leg is up there because if the airbag goes off, I've heard about it from people who have, like, dogs in the front seat, too. Not going to go down that road, but you can only imagine what happens if the airbags deploy. You ever had an airbag deploy? Yes. I had an airbag deploy one time. I thought I died. I thought I was dead. I thought I was in heaven. Surprisingly, I thought that I had made it because there was gunpowder everywhere. Nobody told me about the gunpowder and it stank. But that shit comes at you hard. So that's why I don't like when people's legs or feet are up on the dashboard. And it's only for your own safety. And that puts a lot of pressure on me because I'm like, but what if a car hits me from the side and T-bones me? I'm not really sure if I know what that means. But if somebody T-bones me and it's not my fault, but I still feel the guilt for the rest of my life because your legs flying out the window because the airbag went off. You can't get T-boned in the HOV lane, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, true. My socks were on. Third of all, what's that? It's well because the toes aren't bare. Oh, my feet are clean. Fourth of all, it's my vehicle. Fifth of all, it was up for five minutes, and the blatant disrespect in front of our community is at a level that is so high that I'm going to have to lay down after this and uh, think. And you know what? I think you should think because this is the <laughs> one time. Normally, I would apologize. I'm not dragging you. Other people have done it, but I'm standing my ground. I don't like when people put it gives me such anxiety. I can't pay attention to driving again. It's your car. Listen, in my core, I'm a Southern Belle. Something about me. And a Southern Belle will always have her foot out the, out the window. Why? Because we love to just be in a Jeep and I, we love to be reckless no. and let our hair flow mm -mm. and just feel our summer oats. And it was five minutes and I'll never do it again. And I'll keep my feet locked into metal boxes and I'll sit in the back seat and I'll cry. Is that what you want from me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, there it is. So what are you telling to take a hike besides me after this episode? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my take a hike, you guys, is a little bit controversial. Oh, I'm going to lose followers, friends, family, and fans for this one. Okay. I hate stuffed peppers. Mm. Stuffed peppers suck. And we need to stop telling ourselves that they're delicious. They're not. In theory, I understand where we're going with this because all the components make sense. And visually, it, does have a, it has a je ne sais quoi to it. But when you break it down from a taste perspective, I'd rather chew glass at this point. Oh okay. For, you know what's worse? When someone does it in a green pepper. Uh. Green peppers suck. And if you're still buying them, Really look at yourself in the mirror and also lay down and think about that for a little bit. Green peppers are technically the like the unripened yellow, red, and orange peppers. Is that true? It's true. Look it up, guys. I'm I'm doubling down on that statement. So they're always a little bit more bitter. Okay. Bitter is the phrase I'm looking for on this one. And I just feel like when you cook a stuffed pepper in the oven, it's always uneven, okay? Like the cook time, think about it. When you're sauteing them in a pan, we're really getting the heat on all sides. We're putting them standing up in an oven. It always feels like at some point, it's raw over here, it's burnt over here. And then let's get into the filling, okay? Mince meat, oh, onions, rice, no. cheese. Yeah, I like that. Just not in a pepper. Yeah. And it's gonna get, it's gonna get cut up anyways. Because when you think about it, a bread bowl, really works, right? Because it holds the soup. And when you want a little tender bite of that little bread bowl, you rip and tear, you dip, it's great. But this, it's not the same because you have to get in immediately with the knife, okay? And when was the last time you were out to dinner and looked at a menu and saw stuffed peppers? <gasps> think about that. Have you ever seen it on a menu? No, I don't know. Because I don't think so. Restaurants have a flavor profile and a ritzy titsiness of them to be like, no, 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 no. I'm not serving this slop in my establishment. <laughs> Guess what you have seen at a restaurant? Meatloaf. Because you can elevate a meatloaf. You can only do so much with a stuffed pepper. I just think they suck. They just suck. And I know people on here are going to like start to send me a recipe and be like, you never had nice stuffed peppers. No. And I don't want it. And let me save this uncomfortable conversation with you later saying they sucked. 
Keep it to yourself. If you love him, you love him. I'm not going to yuck your yum. I just did that for the last 10 minutes. Um, I just think they're not good. They're not good. I've never liked a stuffed pepper. Never. I think I've had them a handful of times in my life, and they're just not good. And you've had them, and you've always been like, when when you come home, and when people are like, oh, when the crock pot's on the table, I'm going to start crying. No, when I would come home, my mom would be like, stuffed peppers for dinner, which wasn't often. I would be like, my God. Like, what did I do in the universe to deserve this? Okay. Mm. That is the ultimate bad karma, a stuffed pepper dinner. But like you're saying, in theory, it is a good idea. I just wish it tasted better. Yeah, it's a great idea in theory. And it visually looks interesting. But um, I just, I, they gave me the heebie-jeebies. And you'll never see them on the menu here at the mess hall at Camp Shady Birch. I promise you that, campers. Keep the stuffing in the cohogs. Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. Back just gave me goosebumps. I know. I know. I'm on my American Idol bullshit. This is Camper Crush of the Week, y'all. If you're new here, this is the complete opposite of Take a Hike. These are things that we want to celebrate, things we want to triumph, things we want to love on a little bit. I'm giving a kiss to a couple things this week, but Counselor Jonathan, why don't we start with you? Who is your camper crush of the week so my camper crush of the week is sandra lee who some of you might remember from the food network i am on this side of tiktok i'm on sandra lee talk Mm -hmm. and i can't get off of it and i don't think i ever want to get off of it i remember growing up my mom would kind of watch it but i feel like sometimes when food network would be on i'd be like so engrossed by her because i thought she was fun and i loved the food she was making yes so she had her one show was um semi-homemade Yes, semi homemade cooking with Sandra Lee. And it was basically 70% like pre made bought items from the grocery store and then 30% fresh items just to keep it, you know, the busy, the busy parents in life who just need to take care of the kids and get them to soccer practice. There's a lot going on. We can't all just make a stuffed pepper and a stuffed quahog from scratch. So it, you know, it's a great idea in theory. And I have a couple of fun facts about her. I want to hear them. So she obviously, for those of you who don't know, she's an American television chef and author. She was raised Seventh-day Adventist. She became a Jehovah's Witness, then became Catholic, and then converted to Judaism. So she's dipped a toe in every pond. Oh my God, a religious woman. Not bad at that. And she's written 27 books. As she should. She's an icon and I love her. So, like I said, her first show started in 2003 on the Food Network, and it ran for 15 seasons. My mother was a huge fan, and there's nothing wrong with, like, making the the concept of it. I like the idea of a semi-homemade concept. People are busy. She gets freaky, though. She gets freaky. She does. Um, She also started her second show in 2009 as an immediate response to the recession. And the second show was Sandra's Money Saving Meals, which came out in early 2009. And she started filming it in 2008, like as soon as the recession was happening. She's like, I have to jump onto this. And the cool thing about that was at the time, she was the only host on the Food Network to have two shows running concurrently. Yeah, because she there's something about her energy that feels comforting. She could make the worst slap of your life in front of you, but you look at that woman, you go, you know what? I'll have a drink with her. But you know who didn't say that? Who? Anthony Bourdain. <gasps> Anthony Bourdain <sighs> did not like our girl, Sandra Lee. So let me tell you about a He's little- He's pretentious, but I love him. A little scandal that did happen. Let's hear it. In 2003, she made a Kwanzaa cake. And this Kwanzaa cake consisted of angel food cake topped with icing, cinnamon, cocoa powder, uh, and then she put apple pie filling in the middle of it. It was like shaped like a bundt cake, and she filled the entire center with apple pie filling. She then topped it off with pumpkin seeds and corn nuts. She kept calling the corn nuts acorns the entire episode. I watched it this morning. She was like, and we're going to put some acorns in here. I'm like, girl, they're corn nuts. Wait, that sounds awful first And then, of all. yeah, and then she put the Kwanzaa, the candles in them. And it looked so fucking awful. So Anthony Bourdain said the recipe was eye searing and that her show was a war crime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the girls are fighting. So that was in 2003. That was the first year that she did it. So it was way back when. And recently in 2021, I believe it was 2021, but somebody came out and was like, hey, I'm a, I'm a recipe ghost writer for Food Network. And I actually had wrote that recipe and it wasn't her choice and blah, blah, blah. But then apparently it got taken down. It was in a blog post. The blog post got taken down because there was a legal threat from Sandra and her team. 
Oh, really? Well, you know what? That recipe does sound like it's like it's disgusting and it's offensive. And I, I, I do agree with his sentiments as as intense as they were. Sometimes I will. Sandra, if you're listening, we love you. But you fly off the handle faster than anyone I've ever met before. OK. And can I just talk about just three? I just want to highlight three of these videos no that I talked you. about. OK, so these videos that I saw, y'all, I'm like, what the fuck was she doing? So in one episode. Sandra is making a salmon dinner with rice. Sounds normal, right? Well, first off, she's cooking smoked lox that are her husband's leftovers. Smoked lox are pretty much like cured and ready to eat on top of a bagel. So she's taking that and she's recooking it. Okay, that's not the weirdest part. Because the rice, she puts two handfuls of trail mix into. I'm not kidding you. She takes two fistfuls of trail mix and puts it in the white rice and she mixes it up and she's like, and you're really going to love this. No explanation. No nothing. She just says, you're really going to love this. Girl, what? I don't know where her mind goes. Was she? A lot of people are like, she, she was just drinking on the job a lot, which, hey, me too. But was that the only thing she was doing? Was she hitting a little bit of the devil's lettuce? So I also want to read a comment from that video. It says, when I was a kid, I thought Sandra Lee was a cooking god. Now that I'm an adult, she's an example of why you don't eat at everyone's houses. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the ice cream baked potato video. I love that video. I think it's a fun and creative thing to do. But the way that she went about it was just really weird. She takes a pint of vanilla ice cream. She cuts it in half with a serrated knife. Um, she then puts it in plastic wrap and she massages it with her hands into the shape of a potato. And she says, create your ravine. Yes, your little ravine. And she's just stroking it. It's I don't know. It's very bizarre. Then she coats it in cocoa powder. No, she coats it in about a bottle of cocoa powder. The amount yeah. of cocoa powder this woman uses to cover this vanilla ice cream potato shaped thing is insane. It's also why the cocoa powder. That's going to be so like, why not Nesquik? If, Why not Nesquik? <laughs> you would have made it with Nesquik. Why didn't she just use like chocolate ice cream to begin with? Well, what if you inhale it? It's going to be like... <gasps> yeah, it's like... You have the cinnamon challenge. Choke on, on it. Then she gets real creative with it. And I support this. She takes some whipped topping and she makes the sour cream, which mm -hmm. you love. And then she takes frozen cake icing that is dyed yellow. And she makes that the butter. And the way that she went about this, I can't even explain. She takes the top of a, bu uh, a butter. Dish. What is it called? Yeah, the top of it. And the way that she's like, if you've ever wondered what you can do with the top of a butter dish. I'm like, well, thank God. I've been wondering all day. No one's ever wondered what you can do with the top of a butter dish. Except <laughs> Sandra Lee. <laughs> so she fills it with the icing and then puts it in the freezer. And then when she takes it out, it just loses its shape and she cuts it up anyway. I'm like, girl. She <laughs> cut a slice of it and was like, this is your butter top. I'm like, what do yeah. you do with the rest of this frozen... Icing oh, square triangle, whatever. right? Oh my god, she loves store bought icing. She loves that she shit. She loves icing. Someone's got to keep Duncan Hines in business. And then she takes green dyed pistachios for the chives. It's a fucking mess, but I love it. I think it's fun and creative. Pistachios are already green. She made them like more intense green. Yeah, but that didn't even look like a chive at that point. They would look more like chives than the normal green. Yeah, they were, they were like you're the right. Brightest green I've ever seen. So the comment I'd like to highlight from this video: someone said, "Imagine this somehow being the one transmission that makes it to the aliens." <laughs> Go off, girl. All right. And then my last one, which I did watch with you, was that she had two single layer cakes that she used four containers of fucking frosting for because God knows we need more diabetes in this country. And she's making this with her nephew. And it's it's like a cute moment. And I get where she was going with it. But it's a single layer cake. You don't need that much frosting. And then she cuts out. She uses a round cookie cutter. And she cuts out a circular part of the cake. And she's like, wait till you guys see what we're going to do with this. She's like really amping it up. She's like, you guys are going to love what we're doing with this right here guess what she does with it guys she takes a bottle of soda and just sticks it right in there that's all she did with that and she calls it her soda pop cake i'm like girl what is going on and then someone <laughs> commented it warms my heart that a new generation is discovering that food network once gave a drunk lady her own cooking show and for that we love you, Sandra Lee. Two shots of vodka? <laughs> yeah, she's the two shots of vodka girl. You didn't talk about how she was married to Governor Cuomo. Oh, yeah. She was married to Andrew Cuomo from 2011 to 2019. And then they separated and now she's dating a... Um, uh, an Arab actor. Yeah, she's also, guys, like, she's her net worth is over $100 million. Yeah. So she'll make these silly little recipes and just wipe, wipe her tears with $100 bills. She is 
like so rich mm -hmm. and um, a huge part of my childhood. And after seeing these chaotic recipes, I think I love her more. Yeah, she's crazy. She's chaos. And she is the moment. Thank you, Sandra Lee, for all that you've done. This episode is sponsored by the 400 pounds of icing Sandra, <laughs> Sandra Lee uses every single episode. Yeah. So find tubs of Duncanheim frosting in the mess hall today. So who's your camper crush of the week? My camper crush of the week is sticking on theme with yours. It is very sugary and sweet as well. Okay. Um, my crush of the week is actually a candy that I recently discovered. At 10 a.m. this morning, I was on M&M's.com writing a review for a limited edition flavor that needs to be on full time. I will fight for this flavor to make it to the full year catalog. White chocolate marshmallow crispy treat pastel Easter candy M&M's. Is that what they're marketing it as? Yes. Guys, it's so good. So essentially, this is like a pack of M&M's. You need to get them immediately. I'm not, I'm not, you're listening to this on Wednesday. Get out because Easter's over and these are going to be gone. Currently right now, they're like on clearance slash prices. So they're really cheap. I'm not asking for a huge financial commitment here. I'm asking you to trust me, especially if you're into Rice Krispie Treats. The package is the green M&M and she's wearing a sun hat. And Jonathan mentioned last night that her eyebrows are actually on the sun hat, <laughs> which makes no sense, but either there's a talking M&M. Yeah. So um, essentially it is a Rice Krispie filling coated in white chocolate, then with the classic M&M kind of candy coating. Yeah. And they're all pastels and they're only available for Easter. Um, this is on the description how um, M&M describes them on the website. The Easter Bunny is bringing something new to Easter baskets this year. M&M's white chocolate marshmallow crispy treat Easter candies are the new Easter egg fillers every bunny loves. Made with marshmallow flavored crispy rice centers covered in rich white chocolate and pastel candy coating. These Easter M&M cover candies are absolutely an Easter treat. I'm panicking because all I'm hearing is Easter, 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 which means this is not a full year long idea. I hope that they hear this because you were saying earlier that they were getting good reviews. Like every single review was five stars and everyone was begging M&M's, Mars, if you will, for them to just continue doing this throughout the year. And I'm one of those people. I saw them on sale. I grabbed two bags. I was like, I have to. Listen, you guys, there was only 14 reviews on M&M's.com. I being the 15th. If you guys <laughs> like these, get on your little get on your little phones and go to mms.com and fight for our right to have these all year round. They are so delicious. I could eat an entire bag. If you don't love white chocolate, you're not going to love them. It's definitely kind of like that cuz white chocolate is a lot sweeter. Yes. But I love rice krispies. Uh, uh, however, I will say that th there's like a thinner layer of the white chocolate. Of course. It's mostly like the krispies and the texture is so it's there. And it's also there. the colors. I'm loving the Easter pastels. Yeah, I, I I'm normally one to hate pastels. I look terrible in a pastel. I usually look like a thumb. Um, but these pastels are one that I would wear year round. Eminem, are you listening? Please, Mars. Eminem, I'm just sending you a, a plea. Please keep these on the menu all year round. And guys, run. Don't walk because once these are gone, we don't know if we'll ever get them back. And you're going to think about this episode later and be like, damn it, I never got those delicious Rice Krispie Treat M&M's. That is my crush of the week. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. What song has been stuck in your head all week? You know what song's been stuck in my head all week? Wow. <laughs> The sound of my Rice Krispie Treat M&M's. Wait, I want one. Jonathan was so cute. He was like, I'll go get you a little bowl of them so you can share them with the campers. I know. And we won't. I know people are going to be like, don't eat. Oh, wow. Look, this one has a little tumor. Oh, my God. Um, People like don't love when people eat on podcasts. So I'm just going to have a handful and then I'm going to put them away. But Listen. they're here for in between when we need them. Yeah. It's, I need a little sugar rush. I need a little bite. I also love the colors. I'm sorry. New segment. But let me talk about this real quick. Light Robin's Egg Blue. Mm. That's Robin's Egg Blue. Then the yellow is kind of like the popcorn jelly bean yellow flex. Mm -hmm. And then this is almost like a peachy cream. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous design team, gorgeous idea, gorgeous execution M&Ms. I'm so impressed. Okay, I'll stop talking about them. I'm going to have three more and then we're going to talk about song of the week. Yeah, I'm done. I'm all set because if I have them in front of me, I'm going to keep eating them for days. They're too rich. Okay, so song of the week. Should I go first <laughs> while you're munching away over there? What even is my song of the week? Um, oh, okay, yes. So, my song of the week is kind of random. It's a little bit older. 
It is called Stolen Dance by Milky Chance. I don't know that song. What is that song? Um, You do know it because I played it for you and you're like, oh, I like the song. It's the one that's like, I want you. We can bring it on the floor. Never dance like this oh, before. Now don't talk about, about it. it. Yeah. yeah, I do like that song. Really great song. So um, I was reading an article about them because I'm like, I don't know. Is it a man? Is his name Milky? What's the chance that we're taking here? Is, are you taking a chance when you're drinking milk? We took a chance on drinking milk, the bubble tea. Don't don't drink whole milk and bubble tea. I'll tell you that much. Campers. Oh, my God. That's a story for another day. That <sighs> wrecked me. But continue with Milky it, Chance. It wrecked the rectum. <laughs> um, so it's two German guys. And this song really? was so massive, not just in the, in the United States, but in the UK, that it was like at one point when it had come out, it was like in the top 30 most viewed YouTube videos at the time of all time. Wow. Yeah. And I watched the video and I was like, this is what we were entertained by in 2013 because it was not all that. Um, so the two guys, they, uh, they met in an advanced music class in 11th grade and they've been best friends ever since. How cute is that? I love that. Yeah. And they're still together. And this song came out a while ago. Um, and they had only played two shows like in front of people before deciding that they wanted to actually form a band and come up with this song. So the entire, um, debut album, Sad Necessary that this was on was recorded in a tiny studio, which was in the lead singer's house, which I think is cute and fun. That is cute. Yeah, I think it's a good song. That's pretty much all I got for that. But I've been listening to that a couple times this week. I've found it coming on when I when I put my iPod on Scramble. It always finds a way to my earbuds. So um, I was like, you know what? This song, it's just telling me that I need to make it my, my camp song. I'm sure a lot of the campers out there know um, what it is, but it's worth giving a listen to again. Yeah, and even if you don't remember that one, because it's kind of a hard one to kind of catch with the name and stuff, I think when you hear it, you're like, oh, wow, I forgot about that yeah, one. it's a good hey, one. throw it back. I love that. Yeah. So what have you got uh, on the next, on the playlist for us, baby? I have a new song on the charts, everybody. It's only been out for a month, and it's by my queen, my country queen, Carrie Underwood. The song is called Out of That Truck. Mm -hmm. If you, to know me, to know Zizi, is to know that I am a major Carrie Underwood fan. Mm -hmm. Tell them. Yeah, you're a, you're a, what is her fandom? Carrie the Underwood? The Carrie Heads? No. <laughs> the Underwooders? I think they're called Candy Carries. <gasps> oh, I'm Underwooder. I don't know what they're called. Anyways, I'm in that fandom. I've never seen her live. I think I'll break down if I do because that girl has pipes. I love an American Idol alum. You do. You used to drive to me and listen to only, what's that one song that you like by her? Church Bells. Church Bells. You would listen to <laughs> one singular song. I would like FaceTime you and you're like, sorry, I can't talk listening to Church Bells. I'm like, it's, that was six hours ago. No, it's because when I really like a song, when I discover it, I listen to it on repeat for two hours so I learn every single word because I love to know the words of songs. I'm a wordstress. I'm a wordsmith. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All that to say, the boy loves Carrie Underwood. Well, I just think Carrie Underwood is for the girls who don't necessarily love country music, but love the energy that comes with country music. Like, I put this on, I want to put my cowboy boots on, my denim shorts, I want to shake it out, and you know what? Maybe I want to put my feet on the goddamn dashboard. It's such a crime, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Carrie Underwood, you don't have to love country to love this song. I know they get a lot of flack in that. Like, people just like, I hate country. And it's like, I used to be like that too, but now I realize I actually do like some things of it, so I stopped saying that. Hmm. Not a huge on the category, but this song really breaks the mold. This is a revenge song for the girls. You know we love a revenge country song. So basically, um, she said she wrote the song about trying to have this memory about not getting over somebody because of all the physical marks in a space. And this space is the truck, okay? So she talks about like the strawberry wine stain on the seat, the nail polish on the tailgate, the scratch on the side door. Like it's all these little like kind of like parts of her that are in her ex-man's truck and the song's like listen you can do whatever you want in life but you're never gonna get me out of that truck wait Iconic. are we thinking about that guys bring that back okay that is like the most incredible visual ever and i love it like this is the bridge i'm gonna read the bridge okay please oh you can shine it up you can clean it out spin those tires all over town when the music's up and the window's down i'm the one you're thinking about <laughs> <laughs> bitch she said i'm gonna build this bridge and get over you ho uh, she's she's over it but she knows she's not and like okay i'm gonna sing the chorus i can't help it okay when you're running around in that stick ship chevy bet it drives you crazy think about on us every other back row baby you got some wait i can't do the rest of it i like when she goes you got someone new on your bench sheet trying to forget me lately but the memory stuck so good luck 
trying to get me out of that truck. Mm. And she kind of picked, I watched, there's literally an interview for her talking about it, which is so funny. I'm like, great, it's perfect for the podcast. She's like, I know. She kind of like rolls her eyes. She's like, I know. It's another country song about a truck. Yeah. But she's like, this one's different. And I'm like, it really is. It is. The first time I heard it, I was with you and both of us were like, it was like, <laughs> It was when we were listening to Kelsey Ballerini. It was New Music Friday. Yeah, It came out, I think, the end of March, like March 27th. It was like that week or whatever. So it's still very new. It's really good. She just really, like, just, I don't know. It's kind of rocky in a way. It's not really pop. It's rock. because It really leads with the guitar. But guys, if you're looking to have some fun, this is a song you want to play loud in the car. Yeah. And, it, and I love a revenge song and a country girl revenge song. Guys, we know Before He Cheats. If you love Before He Cheats, yeah. you're going to love this one. Mm -hmm. oh it's like God. a classier way of going about it. It's um, a Class your way of like I'm grown and I'm viewing this through this similar lens I had when I was listening to Before He Cheats. Yeah. But I'm I'm grown. I'm not going to slash the tires, but I will let it be known that I am all up in that truck. It's so true. She's like, I'm not going to slash the tires. I just know that you're never going to forget me. And I love that. I think now I can literally list 10 Carrie Underwood songs that I am genuinely obsessed with. And I feel like when you love 10 songs of an artist, you love that artist. Uh, facts. And I love Carrie. Okay. I'm a Carrie stand through and through. Scary stories around the campfire. Welcome back to Scary Stories. <laughs> Zachariah has his microphone down right now because he's munching on these M&Ms. We can't get enough. I can't get enough. This is Scary Stories around the campfire. These are submitted to, for by you guys to us, as well as Gossip Talk, as well as Dear Counselors. Anything you want us to read or talk about on the podcast, you can submit it to campcounselorspod at gmail.com or just go to campcounselorspodcast.com. Go to the little, like, the tab at the top. What's the tab say? It says write in. Write in. And then you can write your little story to us, click the segment, and we get to read that for um, you guys. So is this a good one, John? This is a good one. And um, it's a it's got a good lesson at the end. I'll say that. A good lesson at the end. We love to learn here at yeah. Camp Shady Birch. When I read this, I felt something because I, I reflected on myself. So let's just get into it. Okay. Dearest counselors, I love and listen to this podcast religiously since week numero uno. Kissy face emoji. Love you, girl. I have a scary story for all my girlies that fail to recognize and respond to danger. <laughs> okay. Whose ears perked up out there? This is for you. You know, the girlies who are 15 vibing in the back of some 25-year-old's Honda Civic clutching a bottle of Malibu while drifting in the parking lot of a Mormon church. I see you reckless angels who see red flags as green flags. <laughs> Respect on our name. Prayers for our safety. I'm obsessed with that because we all know people like that or like you're that person. <laughs> it was written terrifically. Um, so the year was 2015. I was living in what I now know as a trap apartment. The year Fetty Wap taught us about trap queens shortly before moving to prison. Okay, love that 2015 shout out. Anywho, me and my girlies were gathered in my three bedroom converted dental office apartment while my drug dealer roommate was out. Aside, he did pay rent in weed, and I was 20 and a brand new stoner. Okay, wow, he was making out like a <laughs> like a champ there. Weed was actually really expensive in 2015. It's actually really easier to get now and cheaper, but back in the day, it was expensive. Yeah, and let me, before we get into the meat of this, let me just dive into it for really one quick second. I'm going to derail. The kids these days don't know how awful it was to stand in your drug dealer's living room while his dog was sniffing your crotch and you're making small talk with his weird roommate who smells like cheese. I would have to do that weekly and I was like, God, I cannot wait till weed is legalized and I don't have to do this anymore. I cannot believe people are never going to have to experience the shame and fear of having to go to your dealer's apartment for a shitty bag or an eighth. Um, so there were four of us girlies alone in the apartment and we were hitting a bong in the kitchen when we heard a knock at the door. Absolutely hate hearing a knock at the door when you're ripping a bong. It's, I hate it. Absolutely. Me being the leaseholder ran to the door alongside my friend, Sarah, who has like the balls of the friend group, the balls. Love her. Shout out, Sarah. Anyway, I opened the door and in storms in my next door neighbor. I've never met him, but the second he, I opened the door, all five foot four of this man strut into my living room and kitchen area and he just starts trauma dumping. He says, oh man, my baby mama is tripping. And he goes on into about 30 seconds of some horrible story before he spots the bong and says, holy shit, can I hit that? Like, how awkward? Who is this man who's just coming up and has, like, does he not have, he clearly doesn't have an outlet. 
Babe, I I met I met a bridal party in New Orleans and I talked to a girl for four seconds. She goes, "Can I hit your vape?" It's just like <sighs> when you're like crazy like that. You and you know what? I let her hit it. I don't know why. Oh, no. I always say I'm not the person to let you hit my vape, but then I do, and I always regret it. I don't. That's so dumb of me. I'm sorry. I so I understand why she said yeah. Cause she was already high, so she's like, okay. She well, not just that, but he just she didn't never talk to him, and he just like storms into the apartment and is trauma dumping. I know. Oh, my God, read the room. Okay, uh, I'm mad fiending, and this shit got me stressed. Is what the the neighbor said. So we let him hit our bong, and he took the longest and fattest rip that anyone had ever taken. About halfway through, he started coughing. He coughed for a good while, then he ripped the longest, most awkwardly uncomfortable fart I've ever heard in my life to this day, eight years later. God damn it. This hurt around the world. Then he coughed and wheezed. He set down the bong and ran out of the apartment. Eyes ablaze, lungs on fire, dignity in shambles. I never saw that man again. <laughs> uh, the fart was heard around the world. So long, so loud, so uninvited. I think of this very often. We could have been robbed or worse. Love and light and peace with your baby mama. <laughs> and it's signed Bino and Tums in Cabin One. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so this wasn't so much of a scary story, but when you think about the dangers that you put yourself in when you're a kid, it's like, I understand why there are some helicopter parents because I did not need to be 18 years old, drunk and alone, 4 a.m. on the subway in North Philadelphia. I didn't need to be doing that, but I, I did know, it I consistently. Know. And you just think back to the positions that you put yourself in, and it's like, damn, that could have been bad. Like, granted, this was the neighbor, and it wasn't some random stranger. But I personally had a, a situation with me and my old roommate. We let, like, two random men into our apartment because they wanted to hang out and, like, have drinks with us. And then we came to, when we were in the back of the house, and we were like, how do we get we got it. What are we doing? We need to get these people out of our house. We were safe. But again, that sticks with me because it's like that could have been real bad. That could have been real bad. Yeah, I've had a lot of questionable experiences as of all you campers, I'm sure. But you know what? It's a part of the salt and pepper of life, I say. Yeah. You know, sometimes you make a choice and you think about it and you say, yeah, I survived that. But if I am going to be in a retirement home one day, having some CNA wipe my asshole, I better have some good stories for her. Because if I don't, then what was what was it all worth? You know, you have to live your life and make bad decisions. I don't support being not safe, but I do support a good a good bar story. Okay, that's and, valid. And that to that camper, I'm glad she wrote in. I'm glad she's safe. And I'm glad we all got to experience that together. I wish I could have experienced that fart. <laughs> I oh, know. Ew, if it's a fart that bad. I think about my worst fart of my life was with you when your mother fed me beans and I was in your apartment and I farted in your bed and it was the most foul smell that has ever come out of me. Yeah. And I was laughing so hard because it was funny, but I was now I think back and I'm like, oh, that was the worst fart of my life. I had to get to low ground. I had to get on the floor. I'm not kidding. Hot air rises. Keep that in mind, you guys. I got on the floor. I was you literally gassed I me out. I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. We always end up talking about farts and poop at the end of these. Guy, is anyone out there chuckling at this? Because I think farts are funny. Listen, all, all the campers have GI issues. We're a GI friendly camp. That's true. That's very true. Um, okay, <laughs> I think that's all we got for you guys. Thanks for sticking around and loving and laughing with us. We love you so freaking much. And if you want bonus content, you can go to patreon.com slash camp counselors. And I think that's pretty much all we got. Yeah. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.